I got asked to do a walk around video of my Moggy Miner project. So this used to be my, well it still is my Morris Miner. It used to have a Rover V8 in it, um, three and a half litre. Um, started drag racing it a few years ago. Um, we chipped away from sort of 19 seconds all the way down to very high 13s. Um, you know, fully rebuilt the engine and stuff. Um, limited slip diffs, things like that. Um, and ultimately I wanted to go faster and the only way I could do that safely was to completely, completely start again. So I completely tubbed the car um, and I sent it to have this beautiful chassis built um, by Bennett Built Motorsport. So we'll have a little look at the front end first. Um, so they've done all this tubular work which goes obviously through with a um, full roll cage inside. Um, they've done these double wishbone suspension um mounted the engine i did send them the engine that was going in it so it's like got a 400 small block um given the gearbox the engine and the back axle so they mounted all that for me and they did all the sort of tin work and all this lovely beading um so let's talk about the front end first we've got nitrons on the front and on the back but we've got also we're running uh ford ford uprights down here um We've done a, a oh, what is it? A four pot caliper conversion, which is a uh, Austin Princess caliper system. You can get these on eBay; they're de dead cheap. Um, drilled, vented discs as well. Um, so we're still onto this. We, I think, we're thinking of doing away with this sort of system where you can mount it uh, a flexi hose straight to the back of it. We're going to probably flex mount straight to it off the chassis. That's sort of one of the next sort of jobs that's going to take place. Um, down here we've got a wheel wood dual master cylinder front and back because it's just sort of right. Um, the fronts come straight out into a line lock um, where they then come up to this sort of um, distributor valve and it also has a one into two for the front, um, the uh, brake light switch, and a balancing valve for the back brakes. Um, there's a fill-up pot up there, so you can actually get access to them um, to keep the reservoirs full. Um, we have one of these pressure valves as well down here. This keeps a bit of pressure in the front brakes. Normally used for systems where the calipers is high, slightly higher than the mass cylinders. Just sort of remove some of the um, sort of play out of the pedals. Is what I'm told. Um, been doing a bit of wiring today. Well, mounting. Um, sort of wiring panels and stuff uh, there. So we got our main relay, uh, 100 amp, which will probably be for the starter. Two 40 amp relays for headlights, high beam and low beam, uh, and a junction box ready to split all the wiring off. We've got some of the wiring coming through at the moment down here. Um, the big red one, obviously, going for the starter, um, and we'll run a return for the alternator, obviously, and and some other cable down there as well. Um, We've got a Escort quick rack. Uh, the arms are currently off it because we're having them, I've got a machine them this week at work. Um, they're slightly too long, um, so we're gonna take a little bit off them and increase the thread on them. Uh, that should hopefully get done this week. Um, we've got, we're running the standard Morris Minor wider system. I did look at putting a two speed in, but any two speeds I've ever used before, I've always found the second speed way too fast and the first speed's fast as it is, so that'll do. I've had the, blank off all the Morris Minor panels, um, just due to the fact that obviously this is a firewall now, so the engine sits dead in here. We've notched, we've had to do a little notch on this beam here, um, because the dizzy sits so close. That is fill, filled back in, the piece, cut out a new piece, turned it round, put it back in, uh, filled both sides, just to gain us that little bit more room for the dizzy, because it, it's so close to touching it. It's just, you can guarantee when uh, adjusting it, it will be right in the wrong position. Got our fuel line coming up. Um, he's a bit dangly there at the moment. We're probably going to adjust him a bit so I can run a king filter with a pressure pressure gauge on it. So that comes down on the other side of the car to the electrics, um, through the firewall and through the car, all in copper line. Um, let's have a look on the inside. Uh, I've got the one seat in at the moment, more for reference. Been doing a bit of um, dashboard. So this is my dashboard at the moment. We've got our, they're all very temporary as well, not saying properly or straight. Uh, indicators are in, battery lights and stuff like that. I've uh, got a removable panel behind it, so I can get to all the wiring for them. 
uh, which will then all come down this sort of um, gland uh, to underneath where there'll be more wiring. Hence why I've had to put this panel in. So I do, I've taken the control, the another one of those orange junction boxes out at the moment. Uh, so underneath here is obviously gonna have to have all the wiring for the gauges and things. Um, and I've got power steering as well. So this is out of a Corsa. That unit will come under here. Um, when I order that next week, so you can just get a little module that connects into it, that then gives it the feedback it needs from the engine to tell it, sort of, basically to work. They come with a little control um, control knob, so you can set how fast you'd like the steering, basically, and you know hard or soft. Um, removable steering wheel, so I can get in and out because we are now practically sat in the back seat. Um, the gearbox is obviously not here at the moment. That's off getting rebuilt and hopefully we'll hear back from that sort of next week. Um, so that's a TH350. Um, we're having uprated um, clutches, is that the word? Uprated clutches fitted, um, shift kit, and obviously fully rebuilt. And um, just so it's all right. Um, so we got our nice little switch panel up here, which I'm, I really like this little unit. Uh, this unit goes off to sort of a control unit in the boot then distributes the power. Underneath we've got one switch is going to be the main power on and off. It will also act as a kill switch for me. Um, and the second switch next to him is the starter. So he's just on a, he's just a return toggle. Um, so there are the only two switches there. So just trying to limit how much wiring I've got to have running around over the top of me really, because this little control unit that runs eight switches only goes through one little cable. Um, I guess the magic of modern wiring really. Um, no idea how that works. Pure magic, I think. Um, so this is the other side of uh, the standard Mogimar dash, where it's all sort of filled in nicely. Um, you've got more of that beautiful building, uh, beading work from Benetville Motorsport. I will have um, the door cards done as well. Uh, I've got new doors to go in, and a bit of work to do to them still. I'll show you those in a minute. I'll show you some more of the beading. Uh, everything's a bit dirty at the moment. I, uh, I'm having to strip some of the some of these bars, I made a bit of a mistake from painting them and I did not clean them very well. So a lot of the paint is very soft. So that's my own fault. Um, okay, let's come around to the boot. Actually, we'll talk about the back axle. So this is a Volvo 240 back axle running, I think it's a 790 limited slip I managed to, managed to find and fit. Uh, we fully rebuilt that about two years ago when it was running the Rover. Um, just because, again, it's the right thing to do and keep everything right. So these arms I already had, I think um, Bennett built, modified them slightly, strengthened them up. Um, and obviously ran uh, the rose joints and things. And uh, you can see how they've done the chassis underneath here, where it folds up. It rolls up behind it. Yeah, sort of a nice U shape and another pair of nitrons. Um, this, this caliper is currently in the back of my car. And, Buy, I'm going to buy a rebuild kit and rebuild them just so I know everything's all up together the same. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've done under here really. Uh, so you can see where the wiring is going to run. These two cables are they're in a bit of a bit of a limbo. I think one of them is about to get changed to a heavier duty cable. Um, that's on on the to-do list. Uh, my back axle works on a, uh, is it a ladder bar system. Is it a ladder bar? I can't remember what they call it. But yeah, there's the panelled rod on the back, which locates. Uh, and you can see the rest of the back of the tubular chassis. And we'll come under on one of the one of the Volvo two pots over there. Uh, and into the boot. So I had this lovely fuel tank made at Bennett, but Bennett built as well, along with the battery box. Uh, fuel tank, fuel fuel pump is mounted um, and there's the control box for the switch panel. I started doing a little bit of wiring, um, just doing a bit of testing really, make sure everything does what I kind of want it to do. So that main power switch leads straight to that 100 amp relay there which then will give power to everything in the car. Um, I just, just to be safe really, so if I have a problem I'll flip that and it will turn that relay off which will turn everything off. It's the goal. Got a, um, Fuel, fuel sender to get. Um, done some measuring for that, I just haven't got around to ordering it. Kind of everything else to order at the same time is it's a lot to do. Um, you see a bit more of that, the overhead stuff on the chassis. Um, I just let it switch down here. 
just in case. Um, down to this side, much the same. Obviously, there's the fuel line it runs up and over along the, the chassis rail. We actually have a door on the side at the moment. This one's to come off. He's not very clever. He's a bit, he's a bit non-existent underneath. Um, we're running a hydraulic handbrake. Um, it's more decorative than anything else uh, at the moment. And probably when I'm running it, because obviously there's auto. Um, there's other dash and bits. Uh, back onto the front again. Do some wider angles. So you can see one of the doors that's in primer at the back there. Um, so I've got a pair of new doors. Just well, I mean they are second hand. Um, that one's not too bad really. He's got a couple of little holes in the bottom, but the door actually exists, which is better than the other one. Um, this door over here is near perfect. He's in primer. There's my gearbox tunnel. Again, you can see all that brilliant beading work that was done. Um, some of the wings and bits that are in a varied state of sanding and repair. We did a big repair on this swing. Which had a big old dent in them. Which we managed to knock out and come up almost, almost perfect. I'm quite pleased with that. A lot of that was my friend Gareth's work, who seems to have taken to metal work like nothing else, even though it's not his thing he's ever done before. But he's loving it and I can't. I absolutely can't stand standing, sanding this stuff. I'm trying to get perfection. There's the boot lid. I'm currently using today as a table. Um, there's one of the 400s I own. Um, so that was the one that was destined to go in the car. But I want to do a, a quite a big expensive rebuild on that. So I think that one's gonna go on the back burner a bit. Um, and I've bought, I'm gonna buy another one, another 400 exactly the same, that can pretty much go straight in the car and run to aim to try and get it on the road this sort of early part of next year is the goal but we'll uh we'll see how that actually goes got a bespoke radiator over here in the corner which again bennett built did which is absolutely stunning um and up there is my simpsons race exhaust system that's been that i've taken off and lobbed up there because why not um i'll do updates and photos showing uh how lovely that actually looks when it's on but that's sort of a work of art right, in itself. Very short system. So the best you can do really when you're running sort of a hot rod that's flat bottomed and ground clearance is always an issue in them. So they sort of just, uh, they come, they all, they come to a four, you know, four into one here um, and then snake round in this sort of pillar space. Well, is it pillar space? Wing, wing space um, with a bit of a silencer to then just come as a slash cut out the bottom. Um, you can see a bit of the repairs I've done on the actual moggy parts of the car. Uh, yeah, so that's our sort of update at the moment of where I'm up to in my ridiculously long project. Um, it all seems so easy when you get the car back as a rolling project and you think, oh, it's just a case of put an engine in, put a gearbox in, wire it, plumb it. There's a lot of little bits that have to happen. Um, in the road to making it happen. Uh, I had to do some changes to the front rows joints um, and then sort of uh, play with all these spaces um, just to make sure that there was absolutely no play in anything. Um, that took a little bit of time. Same with these uprights. Um, I hadn't realized that they were sort of, well, I mean, it makes sense and I'm sure you guys all think that, but they were tapered for running actual bore joints. Um, so just dropping a bolt through was only actually meeting a very small portion of the of the upright so we drilled them out at work on the mill made some uh, interference fit sleeves and uh, then been able to fit them safely uh, just to make it just to make it right as that is the most important part really um, trying to think what else to talk about so as you can see on that side all the wiring runs neatly along the sort of sill and uh, on this side of the car is, is the fuel line that, that snakes its way through the front firewall. Back out. Um, the, a, lot of, a lot of the brakes are plumbed. I think the system to the rear is plumbed. Um, so just after the hydraulic handbrake it goes back through the firewall. 
um, waiting for a flexi hose to then link it over to the back axle. Um, and front end, obviously, it's sort of a similar point, really. Um, and, uh, we're running the indicator stalk. That's just a Land Rover um, indicator stalk. Um, it obviously has a high beam on it. Um, and the horn just saves saves a couple extra switches and buttons, really. Uh, I have flipped it over, though, just due to the fact that it's a lot easier and more convenient on that side. Um, so the next project this week, what I've got to carry on doing is carry on with this chassis. I want to need to get paint on it because the gearbox will be back soon. So that can then go straight in once it's all, all the chassis written and the interior are all repainted. Then it's onto the doors, um, where the original handle should be uh, comes way too close to the, to the chassis, to the, you know, the roll cage. Um, so that's no good. And ultimately you're set in the back of the car, so you can't reach them. It's not really right. So I've seen before someone make a sort of a slot here and a link down straight to where the mechanism is, which I don't have a door with a mechanism in at the moment. It might be able to sit on this one. Uh, so you snake, you know, just a little slot here down to the bolt here, because um, then it's just pulling on the latch system, which is somewhere around here. I guess the bolt will be here actually. The latch is obviously here um, to make it a bit more of a quick release system. And I was, was quite thought that was quite smart in my friend's car who had that. But um, yeah, there we are. Um, the Morris Minor.